When asked why we choose to live in the cold, snowy, sometimes buggy Adirondack Mountains, we locals do more than just rave about the scenery. We also sing the praises of our hardy, independent-minded neighbors. None makes a better example than Paul Casson, who lives near our Sable Forks. Over the course of a long and productive life, Paul has spent much of his free time painting outdoor scenes and carving birds, and he's still at it. His first big push came after he was discharged from the Navy at the end of World War II. When I came home, I was a little bit wired up. And people around me knew that I could draw, so they all encouraged me to try painting. It might calm you down. So I did, and I didn't take any lessons. A big mistake, it would have hurried things up. I started visiting museums and galleries just to see how the other guy did it and get my nose right up to the canvas to see how the, the strokes went. And I kind of felt the composition. And that's it. I've learned to paint with my head without even painting. So as when I get to it, I know just what I want to do. And that's the way I found out I was starting to look at everything <laughs> in different shades of color and shadow and light. And it's just happening. And that's all there is to it. Paul Casson paints scenes and subjects that he is drawn to by his passion for the outdoors and for the wild animals and plants he finds there. I was always painting in my head as I looked at the scenery, looked around, and I was trying to compose or mix colors and do all of that in my head. So when I got back to the canvas, uh, there it is, I, it just came out. Some of the paintings, I'm actually in that piece of woods. There isn't another thing around me. Every little thing in the woods is, uh, is here, and I try to transfer it into the painting as much as possible. I was surprised to see this otter up on the, on the ice, so I pulled over a little and so I'd get out of traffic. I had my binoculars with me, and I'm looking at him, and he'd disappear in the hole in the ice and then he'd come up again. He'd have weeds dangling over his head sometimes or wearing a chunk of ice on his head like a, a dish. And, uh, and then he, he'd roll around on the ice every once in a while. And these two mallards are looking at him like, what the heck? They didn't know what to make of it. It took me a while to find out what he was doing. And there, <laughs> the son of a gun, was digging frogs out of the mud down at the bottom of the pond. <laughs> I don't push. I just paint because I like to paint. And I think if I painted for the dollar, it would show in the painting. Early on in Paul's creative life, his energies began to find outlet in a new direction, the carving of birds in the painting of the carvings. Good friend of mine, Joe Staropoli, he asked me if I wanted to go duck hunting with him. We were in Bedford with the nursery at that time, and uh, he had 50% ownership in a rig of decoys and the boat down in Mamaroneck. And he, they kept all the gear in the locker right on the dock. So I went hunting with Joe, and uh, I noticed that the decoys were all pretty well beat up. And when the season was over, I offered to repair the decoys. They were mostly styrofoam. So I put new wooden heads on some and patched up others with wood. And I got the idea, well, I've gone this far, why don't I make the whole damn decoy? From working decoys, it went on to decorative. I started going to decoy shows, and the decoy world Carving shows and uh, collecting is big time today. So I got into the, the ground floor almost, and it grew from there into other carving. I, well, if I could do a duck, I'll try a, a hawk, and I just kept moving. A little of everything. This is the, the Drake Hood and Maganza. They, they are bigger than this. They're about the size of the wood duck. 
And that's the head up there, and this is the drake. This is done in the Barnegat style, strictly stylized bird, strictly for collectors. Most bird carvings, the, the bird is just standing there. And I try to put some life in them. You got that diving peregrine and uh, with the partridge, I've done them flying. It shows a little action. I was on my way over to visit my daughter uh, in Vermont. And uh, when I got down near the bridge, there was this uh, peregrine over on the grass on the side, feeding on a wood duck. I took a few long distance pictures of him. On my way back, I stopped and investigated the site. Uh, he left the head and the wings behind. I took the head and the wings with me, brought them home, put them in the freezer. And when the spirit moved, I pulled them out and did the, the wood duck carving from those pieces, so they're verbatim in size. In his 90th year, driven by a creative spirit and by a deep passion for things he loves, Paul Casson still paints and still carves and still finds inspiration in the wild Adirondacks. I just feel like I gotta do it, and, uh, and that's all there really is to it. I, I don't dwell on any part of it. it. It's just a natural thing to do.